OCO, my name is Shanice DeCloud. I work for the Cherokee Nation Cultural Resource Center. The following video is part of our new education series geared toward assisting teachers set up their own cultural activities in the classroom. In this video, I'm going to teach you about Cherokee marbles, and I'm going to show you a simplified version of the game that you can teach your students in the classroom. Originally, Cherokee marbles would have been made out of marble or limestone. Chunks of rock would have been ground down, hand hewn and polished to make them nice and smooth and round. And a marble could be made just as smooth and round as these pool balls that you see, just by using our hands and tools that we found in nature. Today we use pool or billiard balls to play marbles. We do this for a couple of reasons. One reason is that they're roughly the same size and weight as an old traditional marble. The other reason is that they have numbers and colors on them, and this helps students remember which marble is theirs while they're playing the game. To set up a marble game, you'll need a set of pool balls or billiard balls. A set will go up to number 15, and it will also include a cue ball, so you can have roughly 16 students playing at it one time. You'll also need a claw hammer or a trowel, and you'll need enough markers or tent stakes to mark off each hole that you'll be playing with. Now I'll show you how to lay out a marble field. We're gonna start with one stake in the ground. This is gonna be your starting point. You won't need a hole here. This is just where students will start playing. I'm not going to measure exactly. I'm just gonna kind of pace it off. So I'll start with my heel against this first post. And I'm gonna take about five steps, five long steps out toward where I want the next post in the ground. Okay, so here's my next post. You wanna make sure wherever you're playing that it's gonna be okay to dig some holes in the ground. You don't wanna be playing on a football field. <laughs> so right next to this post, usually on the outside, I'm gonna dig a small hole, just big enough for the marble. I'm gonna make sure I don't leave any chunks of dirt that will get in the way. Now I'm just gonna take my marble and put it in the hole and I'll use my heel to push down. That way it makes a nice indention and shape for that marble to fit in. So I've got my hole and I'm just gonna use my foot and smooth the edges down. That way the marble can roll into it nicely. Just like that. You can have as many or as few holes as you like depending on the age and ability of your students. But your last hole is always going to be at a right angle from your starting line. So this field is gonna have three holes. Here's my second hole. So I'm gonna pace off another five paces out to where my last hole will be. So here's my last post and my last hole. Now we'll talk about the rules of the game. To start your game, the first student will start with the yellow marble with the number one. That way you can keep track of which student goes next in line. They're gonna plant their feet behind this first post and we encourage students to keep their feet planted. We don't want them to move their feet when they're taking their turn because that could be taking advantage and trying to get a step closer to the hole. So they're gonna plant their feet, they'll take their marble, and they're just gonna roll it underhand and try to reach that first hole. So they didn't quite make it to the hole. Their turn is done. They're gonna to go to the end of the line and they're gonna wait for their turn to come back around. Then the next person will take their turn. They're gonna have the number two marble that's blue and they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna plant their feet and roll their marble and try to make it in that hole. Okay, didn't quite make it, so their turn's done. So then you just continue that way, taking turns one after the other. When it comes back around to the first player, number one, they're gonna walk out find their marble, and again, they're gonna plant their feet, they're gonna point their toes at that hole that they're aiming for, 
and they're going to stand behind their marble. Once they've got their feet planted, they'll pick up their marble and try to aim and roll it into that hole. You have to make it in the first hole before you can go on to the second. You have to make it in the second before you can go to the last. Now, a few little tricks. One, if you're close enough to the hole that you can reach down and set it in the hole, so long as your hands and your knees don't touch the ground, that's perfectly okay. So if my marble were back here and I was aiming for that hole, I could crouch down and get it as close as I can, so long as I don't move my feet. Another tip during normal gameplay, once you've made it in a hole, you can immediately take another turn. During normal gameplay, if no one is poisoned, you can tap other marbles to take another turn. So if I'm aiming for a hole and I want to try to get closer to it, I'll pick up my marble and I'll tap someone else's. That way that puts my marble closer to my goal and it knocks them farther away. Now that I've hit that other marble, I can take another turn and try to get closer to the hole. However, you can only do this three times in your turn. This last hole we call poison. If you make it in this hole, you get to turn around and try to take other players out of the game. This is how that works. Just as before, before you take your turn, you're going to plant your feet behind your marble with your toes aimed at that hole. You're going to pick up your marble and you're going to try to get it in the hole. And I'm close enough, so I'll just reach out and set it in there. So now, you're going to choose any other player on the field. Doesn't matter if it's your best friend in the whole world. We're going to pick one of these players and we're going to try to take them out. So I'm going to go after number two, the blue one. So I'll stand behind my marble with my toes pointed at number two, the one I'm aiming for. I'm going to pick up my marble and I'm going to try to hit it. I'm just going to roll it, toss it lightly. I'm just going to try to hit that other marble. So I hit number two. That means he's out of the game. So I'll leave my marble where it is. I'll pick up number two, hand it to that player, tell him good game, and he's out. So now that I've taken out at one player, I get to keep going until I miss. Anyone that I hit, I'll take out of the game. So again, I'll plant my feet, point my toes at the marble I'm aiming for, pick up my marble, and try to hit it. I'll just continue that way until I've taken out all the other players or until I miss. Now, if two players are poisoned and they're going at each other, they have to hit each other three times in a row before they'll knock the other marble out of the field. This is a simplified version of marbles. If you'd like more information on more traditional rules, please feel free to contact us. I hope you enjoy playing with your students, and hopefully this becomes a part of their normal recreational activities. Wado for your time to learn about Cherokee culture and history. Share what you learned today with someone else. For more information, contact Cherokee Nation Education Services Cultural Resource Center at education at cherokee.org or 918-453-5000 and ask for education services.